So now we're going to begin our exercises in REDCap by navigating to cri-datacap.org. This is the same URL that was linked in the slides, and there was also a link to this URL in the training confirmation email you received after signing up for the REDCap 101 online training. So first you're going to need to put in your username. For most of you, this will be REDCap underscore training underscore the last two digits of your confirmation number. And there's directions for this uh, in the confirmation email you received and also in uh, page one of the online training and in the current page of the training, there'll be a reminder of your username given the confirmation number you entered. So do make sure that that's correct. You'll enter that red cap training account username. The password will be exactly the same as the username and you'll log in. So please do not change the username or password or any of the information associated with these accounts. They're only to be used in this 101 training uh, just what, until you complete this training and then you shouldn't use this account again. If you already have a REDCap account and you're taking this training now as a refresher, feel free to log in with your uh, permanent REDCap account and that way you can always go back to the training exercises that you've completed now and use them um, as an example. So it's okay to use your full account if you have one already. If you only have a data entry account at this point, you won't be able to do a lot of the project creation. So in that case, make sure you use the, the training account that you were assigned. So go ahead and type in that username and password and then we will log in. Okay, so the first thing that we see when we log in is um, we're essentially on our My Projects page. You'll see a list of projects that are associated with an account. Now, now most of you are probably just in training accounts, so you're going to see a bunch of previous trainings. But when you eventually get your own account, only the projects that you have access to will be in here. There will typically just be you know many fewer than this, but I've been working on uh, a number of accounts, a number of projects. Uh, so just to walk you through what we see at the top screen, um, there's our home tab that has some basic information about REDCap here at the CTSI, my projects, which is where we can uh, access any projects that uh, we've been working on or are going to start. Uh, we'll come back to here in a minute to start a new project, but I also want to point out that this is where you can um, access uh, this help and FAQ section is really useful. It's very detailed. So this should be your first place to go if you're having questions about how to do something. Um, it's often in the help or FAQ, or as we'll see, uh, there's a lot of REDCap tutorial videos linked into the different sections of REDCap. Um, so uh, I'll point a few of those out in a moment once we begin our project. And so that might be the very first place to go if you're uh, trying to do something in REDCap. And if you don't see a video tutorial embedded in the section of REDCap that you're in, then go to the help and FAQ. You could do a keyword search. Um, there's some uh, pretty detailed instructions here for almost all of the features of REDCap. There's also links to the training videos up here. So if you do want any video reminders, uh, especially if you decide that you're gonna start working with a new thing. For instance, today we're gonna use the online designer. If, uh, you don't use that for a few months and you go back to trying to create a project, you might wanna watch this five minute video using the online designer. Or if you decide at some point that you wanna use the data dictionary instead of the online designer to create a project, you could go ahead and go to uh, training and videos and open up this 10 minute video on how to use the data dictionary. Just uh, a quick explanation, the data dictionary, the online designer is what we'll use today. It's a drag and drop menu for building the project and it's the way that 95% you know, or more of our users build their projects. The data dictionary is a second way to build your project by essentially formatting a Excel spreadsheet or a Google doc as a uh, as a REDCap project. So you'll have to do this kind of one-to-one -one field matching, but it can be much faster to build a project that way, especially if you're, uh, you find that you're adding lots of new questions and things like that. The data dictionary can be a very powerful tool for building a project uh, more quickly. So if you're interested in that, we won't really cover it much in the training today. I'll just show you how to get to it. Um, but if you are interested in using it, I'd suggest watching this 10 minute video or reading up on the data dictionary in the FAQ. Um, the other uh, 
links up here are um, not so key. Um, send it is a basically like a email function kind of built into Redcap. There's also Redcap Messenger that is similar to something like Gchat, but it's built only into Redcap, and you could start conversations with uh, people that you're collaborating on with the same project. Um, and you could do things like tag specific records and um, and such within the Redcap Messenger, so that could be a useful tool as well. Um, the Control Center is something that you won't see on your accounts. That's just an administrative account feature. Okay. So um, now we're gonna go to create a new project and that's really what we're gonna walk through for most of the rest of the training. So to start a project, you'd first see this page where you'd give a project title, select a purpose, and so on. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna start by um, creating, uh, by giving our project a title. So let's start by using today's date. For me, that's April 22nd, 2020. Um, but for those of you that are doing this on a, another day sometime in the future, please put in the current date um, that you're in to, for, uh, to this project title, and that'll help us track these projects. So I'm going to put in the, today's date and then REDCap 101 training. We're going to select for the purpose of the project that it's practice or just for fun. Um, I'll note here, though, that if you were doing a research project, this is where you'd put uh, some of the required fields for research projects, such as PI name, email address, and IRB number. I'll leave it on practice just for fun now. I'm not gonna put in any folder. I don't need any notes. Um, and we're gonna start our project from an empty project, a blank slate. And this is the way I recommend starting the vast majority of REDCap projects. There are a couple other options. You could also upload a REDCap project from an XML file. Um, you would really only do that is if, uh, if you had a collaborator that had already built a REDCap project and you want to use a very similar project, you could ask them to export their REDCap project as an XML file. That will not contain um, any data from their project. It'll just contain their, their instruments, so basically their, um, the structure of their project. So you could upload that and basically create a clone of the project. Or the third option is uh, you could select a template from below. However, I really caution people against using templates from below. You know, if, even if you're doing a lot of you know basic demographic information, it will often um, be less smooth and take more time to sort of coerce this basic demography template into exactly what you want for your project. So again, I really recommend the vast majority of time creating an empty project from a blank slate um, and then uh, taking it from there. So that's what we're going to do today. And we'll click create project. Okay, and now we really see our home base in REDCap. This is the menu that you're going to be interacting with the most frequently. So this is called the Project Setup tab, and we can see Project Setup here. And if at any point you ever get lost in REDCap, you know, you might be embedded a few menus deep into some of these other tools. And if you want to get back here, the best way to do it is by uh, going to this top left menu bar and clicking Project Setup. That will always take you back to this location. So if at any time in the training today you get a little lost, think typically the first place that you want to go is back to Project Setup. And then you're usually only a click or two away from wherever you're trying to go. Okay, so let's start now by, um, I'll, I guess I'll walk you through a few of these menus. First, we have main project settings. We're not gonna deal too much with this today, but this is where you would enable surveys if you wanted to use surveys by clicking this button, or if you wanted to have repeating forms for longitudinal uh, data collection, you would click enable there to um, enable those. If you finally got IRB approval for your research project and you now wanted to add that IRB number, you'd click this, Modify Project Title and Purpose. And if it was a research project, you could then enter that information here. 